without doing anything, CO2 will go in the atmosphere. You'll get a big blanket of CO2 around the Earth, and just like underneath a blanket, the Earth heats up. So we really have to incentivize firms to stop using coal, to stop them using oil, and to stop them using gas. You can beg them, please don't do it, but the best thing is to actually charge them. The economics of climate change stems from the concern about our planet. If we just carry on using coal, we carry on using oil the way we've always done, temperature will go by five degrees, that means we're toasted. All kinds of catastrophes might happen. For example, the Gulf Stream around England might stop or might, might reverse. We may get huge release of methane or from other greenhouse gases from melting of permafrost. The planet will survive, but mankind may not survive. So that means that we have not much carbon left to burn. We have a carbon budget of about 300 gigatons of carbon. And if we burn more than that, then temperature will go above 2 degrees Celsius. Let's say the next 50 years. And, and as a result of that, uh, there'll be damages because people will get diseases, people will get a lot of asthma. There may be a lot of instability in the world because people who live in very hot countries like in Africa may start migrating. So they may all migrate to Europe or maybe all migrate to Siberia. A lot of costs are associated with that. Uh, therefore, economists are worried about what we can afford, what can we do to actually solve that, to actually avoid that. 25 years ago, there was a seminal article by William Nordhaus in the Royal Economic Society's Economic Journal. And he was the first one who put an integrated model together of the science of climate and the economics of climate. So the stuff that's done by physicists, atmospheric scientists, we have the stuff we know as economists on growth and how much fossil fuel we need to use to produce goods by which we can get welfare from consumption. And by putting those two together, he could actually trace the effects of fossil fuel on global warming and he could actually calculate for the first time yeah, what kind of price we have to charge. That price can be charged via tax, but it can also be introduced by an emissions market. It doesn't matter which way to do it, as long as the industry feels the cost of the negative externalities they impose on our planet. If you look around the world, fossil fuel gets subsidized rather than taxed for all kinds of good reasons, but it's very bad for the planet. So really we should first of all get rid of all fossil fuel subsidies. And then secondly, we should start pricing carbon seriously. And then I think uh, industry will switch more to solar energy, will switch more to wind energy. They will have a bigger incentive to capture CO2 and bury it in the ground. And we'll have ordinary people and companies will have an incentive to use less fossil fuel and thereby, thereby mitigate the problem of global warming. I think it's important to mention that it's not a political thing, it's not a left thing or a right thing or a green thing, it's a, it's a planetary thing, it's something all citizens of this earth have a big incentive for to do that.